In the early years of the first robotics competition, many teams found themselves working towards a singular goal. Build a robot that fulfilled the game challenges, consistently and without breaking. The program has evolved so far beyond this in recent years, with teams constantly pushing the bounds of technology to go faster and optimize their performance. But the program would not have been able to reach this point without the pioneers of the 90s. Despite their groundbreaking efforts, we have the least amount of information about competitions in this decade. Numbers were swapped around, teams merged and separated, sometimes at the event. Very few metrics were tracked, making stats in this era difficult to parse. On this episode of Rewind, we've done a deep dive into this era, pulling out the best of the best based on grainy match footage, newspaper scans, and half-remembered anecdotes. We're counting down the best of the decade. Here are your top FRC robots of the 1990s. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. First, teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com contest. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Before we get into our top five, let's talk about metrics. Teams were ranked objectively and subjectively based on a number of statistics. First, competitive success. Winning a regional or championship event is no small feat in this time period, with teams traveling from all over to compete. Regionals tended to have around 30 teams, and championships had 80 to 100 teams. Second, rankings. This is one of the stats that we have the most info from, from almost every year. Rankings are admissibly not the best metrics to measure a team's performance, especially during this era, but they do objectively tell us how a team was performing over a set of matches against other opponents. Finally. Awards. While we don't have every match from these teams to analyze, we barely have any, we can put teams that won awards like Best Play of the Day and Leadership and Control above the rest, as these innovations made them stand out on the field. One thing to note, these are not averages. If a team competed for only a few of these years, they're only counted for those years. A standout team that only competed from, say, 1997 to 1999 would rank worse in these metrics than an original team. And for that reason, you're going to see older teams higher in the rankings, as they had more of an impactful run in the 90s than other teams. Based on these metrics, here are your top 10 for the 1990s. Let us know who we snubbed, who should have been higher, and who you're watching to climb into the 2000s. I'll shout out one team here, 111 Motorola Inc. and Rolling Meadows High School and Wheeling High School, also known as Wildstang, who, despite taking years 1993 through 95 off, bookended the decade as championship finalists, starting a run that would pose them as one of the greatest FRC teams of all time. Let's dive into our top five. Our first team on this list should be one that's familiar to our audience, despite being the only current inactive team on this list. Taking the fifth spot, it's Delphi Automotive Systems and Pontiac Central High School, known by their modern name of Chief Delphi Team 47. Winning the Rookie All-Star Award at both the regional and championship level in 1996, 47 innovated with ease, and in three years debuted FRC's first swerve drive. They took home three regional wins and the Impact Award, as well as a Nationals finalist appearance. Their run in the 90s, though short, puts them as a top team with many innovations that would change how teams both presented themselves at competition and designed mechanisms for the game. Chief Delphi made a name for themselves by constructing a program that impacted the wider community, sustained their growth, and delivered on the playing field. From Cincinnati, Ohio, it's Procter & Gamble Company, Walnut Hills High School, known today as Operation Orange, FRC 144. This robot pioneered launchers in FRC as the first competitive flywheel shooter. In their rookie season, 1994, with their robot Sunny Delight, 144 dominated the competition. Their mastery of the control system, innovative take on the game, and new take on what an FRC robot could be capable of really showed where technology was going. Their run in 1994 went from seating low to dominating playoffs as they tuned in their shooting position and flywheel. Their gravity-fed feeder mechanism would inspire many designs in 2006 and 2009, years after the robot has finished its career. 
They were one of the only teams to consistently play perfect matches that year, scoring all the soccer balls in the goal for a perfect 36 points. 144 would go on to win leadership and controls many times after that, building on what they'd learned in the 1994 season, but never quite reaching the level that they did in the playoffs of Tower Power, but that robot, Sunny Delight, has earned its place in FRC history. Out of Hammond, Indiana, it's Berry Machine and Manufacturing and Clark Gavitt Hammond Morton High Schools, known today as Team 71, Team Hammond. It's a name that you should be familiar with from the early days of FRC, but the 1990s was where they got their start. Taking the number one seed at the national championship in their rookie year of 1996, 71's dominance started early in their career. Despite not winning nationals in their first season, by 1997, they would have a dominant performance on their field in their second year. Attending their first regional, the Midwest Regional, they took home number one seed and winner, and proceeded to show off their robots' capabilities on the world stage in Epcot at Nationals, winning Leadership and Controls Award as well as the championship, despite seeding seven. This robot, BD Juice, would be given the key to the city of Hammond. Team 14 is on blue here. They utilize a human player only strategy, choosing not to pick up tubes from the floor, but instead be loaded near the end of the match. With this design, one of the first successful four bar lift mechanisms in FRC, they brought consistency and repeatability to their match play, which was a rare feat for the time. From the beginning, 71 was thinking about the game differently, finding loopholes, pushing the bounds of what was trending towards the meta. In 1997, their robot would stack tubes on the top portion of their robot, only to detach to prevent descoring from opponents. To this day, mechanisms cannot be intentionally detached from a robot without penalty. Other notable performances from 71 were in 1998 and 1999, where they won two more regionals and took home four separate awards. It was the start of a historic legacy for Team Hammond. Next up are dramas in the two spot, and with only two teams with multiple Nationals finals appearances, it comes down to these two. One of the original powerhouses, the two spot goes to Team Nipro Inc. and Clinton High School from Clinton, Massachusetts, known today as 126 Gale Force. There was a time when 126 was the best robot in the world every year that first had been in existence. And that was 1992, when they completed the challenge of Maze Craze with ease, building the strongest ball harvester on the field with no other competition. 126 continued to be a strong contender through the 90s, heading back to the national finals in 1995 with a robot that used PVC pipe, polycarbonate, and complicated gear trains to achieve a well-engineered and robust machine. Winning the New England Regional in 1999, they went on to win Best Offensive Round at the National Championship event, with a robot that expanded to fit as many floppies as possible in their intake. After their success in 1992, 126 pioneered a number of roller intakes that influenced design evolution into the early 2000s. Their 1992, 93, and 94 robots all featured drop-down rollers, with their 1996 robot featuring a mechanism that we saw repeated on many robots in 2014, 20 years later. 126's mechanism design was ahead of the times, and it would take a bit for their controls and build reliability to catch up, meaning that while they had some of the best and most influential designs of the 90s, this wasn't always reflected in competitive results. Their engineering pioneered what an FRC robot could look like, and other teams took note. Appearing in three out of eight championship finals, our number one in our top five of the 1990s is Delphi Automotive Systems and Kokomo High School, known today as Team 45, the Technocats. Out of Kokomo, Indiana, 45 had a strong start to their career, appearing in the finals of Maze Craze, facing off against the best in a 1v1v1v1 winner-takes-all match. Keeping that strength up, 45 appeared in the top 15 seeds at championships for every season in the 1990s, but truly hit their stride in 1998 and 1999, introducing new design styles to the community, along with best practices and documentation. 45's 1998 robot is one of the best of the decade for this reason, because it introduced a design element to FRC that we still use to this day on almost every robot, from the kitbot this year to all four Einstein champions. 45's 1998 robot featured a double-jointed arm that was pretty textbook for the 1990s, well-built and reinforced so that it could support its own weight at height, and was driven with a standard tank, tank chassis. The end of Factor on this lift was the true innovation. For the first time, teams used rollers on their claws to pick up game pieces. Both teams 45 and 177 are credited for introducing these rollers to FRC. They debuted at the exact same event. By championships, these two robots were in contention for the top spot, where 45 proved that they had the consistency and robustness to take the win. 
45 also took home the Excellence in Engineering Award for their process and creativity that year. Using that process, they were also finalists in 1999, partnering with teams 84 and 111 to make it all the way back to the final rounds. And that rounds off our top FRC robots from the 1990s. The 90s were a period of growth, finding footing and seeing what worked. The influence of what robots were successful, which had rules written about them, and which teams continued to be successful year after year would truly influence how this program evolved into the 2000s and beyond. But until then, thanks for the rewind. Make sure you subscribe to the Fun Robotics Network YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the show, give it a like, let us know your favorite robot or mechanism from the 90s, or any other topic you want to see covered next time on Rewind. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information.